Church, Millport, Alabama, Sunday morning service, where our pastor and shepherd is Reverend Benny W. Henry. I'm one of the associates, Reverend Dickerson. I'll be reading from the King James Version Bible. It's coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 13. It said, There had no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will, with the temptation, also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we say thank you today for all the trials and tribulations we've gone through. Father, for all the temptations that have crossed our path. Father, for all the good and bad that has been done in the world, we say thank you because we know that you're in charge of it all. Father, we just ask you to come into this place today and have your way, allowing your peace to come upon this place. For all those that are troubled, we know that you solve any problem. Father, when they're financially destituted and there's no way out, you make a way out of no way. Father, you have never lost a patient in the operating room. Father, you've never imprisoned an individual that wasn't justly due because you're too just to be wrong. Father, we just ask you to touch each and every individual at the sound of my voice here and those that are live streaming today. Bless them in a special way. Let this service be thus that they've never encountered before. Because, Father, this is a new day that you've made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Bless all the associate ministers, deacons, and their wives, auxiliary heads, church family. Even, I have to say this, but even the sinner. May God bless him that he may turn from his wicked ways. Come running, what must I do to be saved? Father, we ask all these blessings today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Blessed is everyone that fears the Lord and walketh in his way. For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands. Happy shall thou be, and it shall be well with thee. Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of thine house. Thy children like olive plants around about the table. Behold, that thus shall be a man, the, the man be blessed that feareth the Lord. The Lord shall bless thee out of Zion, and thou shalt see the good of Jerusalem all the days of thy life. Yea, thou shalt see the children, children, and peace upon Israel. I read you Psalms 128 in its entirety. May the Lord add a blessing to the reader, hear, and do of his holy word. Good morning. Let us bow here for prayer. This morning, our Heavenly Father, we come thanking you for another day. You have blessed us with a portion of health and strength. You woke us in our right mind. You've been so good to us. We just want to say thank you, Lord. You didn't have to wake us up this morning. So many blessings that you have blessed us with that we didn't deserve. And we forget. Sometimes we forget to just say thank you. Realizing that all our help come from you, Lord. Not some of it, but all of it, Lord. We can't do anything without you. Help us to realize, Lord, that while we travel this journey in life, Lord, that this world that we're in, it's not our home. We're just passing through. We ask that you just bless us where we will walk as you would have us to walk. Bridle our tongue and and do those things that are right and pleasing in your sight, Lord. Lord, we ask a blessing upon the sick and afflicted all over the land, Lord. We ask that you bless those that are in behind prison walls, Lord. Bless them and, and help them to realize, Lord, that if they just turn their life over to you, everything will be all right. strength to, to want to go on. Let them know that if their loved one died in, in Christ and they are doing what they're supposed to do, then they will see them again. Lord, we ask, ask a blessing upon Pastor and his family. Continue to just bless him with the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding he needs to lead 
flock that you have set before him. I ask a blessing upon Reverend King, Reverend Dickerson, and, and if there's anyone else up in the pulpit, I just seen those two. Bless them, Lord. Allow them to just keep doing what they're doing to assist Pastor Lord. Bless their families as well, Lord. Lord, we ask that you bless the one that's going to preach your holy word, Lord. Bless him where he can stand boldly and declare what you have given him. Because if you gave it to him, Lord, we need to hear it. We need to hear it, Lord, and we need to take it in our heart, Lord, and, and, and tell others, tell others all about our God. If, if we hear it and don't act on it, we're just like the, the one that got the one talent and, 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 and dug a hole and planted it, Lord. So we, we just want to just thank you for all that you've done, all that you are doing, and all that you're going to do, Lord. Forgive us for our sins. Create in us a clean heart and renew within us a right spirit, Lord. We want to be ready, Lord, when you come. And the only way to be ready is to study your word. Obey your will, Lord. It's not our will. It's yours. And the stuff here on this earth is just temporary. Let us stay focused on the things above, which is eternal. Lord, when we come down to the end of our journey, Lord, we ask that you give us a seat in our kingdom. For these prayers and blessings in your darling son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have you got good religion? Certainly, Lord. Have you got good religion? Have you got good religion?
Praise the Lord again. Yes, Lord. Praise the Lord. Now it's time for us to get ready to pray for our sick and shut in. Now on our prayer list today, we have Shirley Hodges, the Davids family, Pearly Ware, Latrice Dickerson, Broderick Scott, Javante Scott, Peyton McCurry, uh, Elnora Porter, Bianca Miles, Bertha Brown, and Javaris Neal. Our sick and shut in, we have Sean Cockrell. Uh, bereavement, we don't have any on our list, thank God, but there are somebody bereaving today. And for all those who are in bereavement, we ask in prayer for their families. Amen. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father God, once again, we say thank you. First and foremost, for allowing us to enter this day. As we slumbered and slept all night long, Father, you had your angels camped over us, keeping watch, keeping us from all hurt, harm, and danger, knowing that you'd shake us and awaken us into this day. Father, you brought us forth in a mighty way, with a right mindset. We had our mind fixed on you when we woke this morning. The man went to the cupboard, get a morsel of food. Went to the closet, picked out some attire to wear. Got in our vehicles and traveled down the dangerous highways and byways to make it to your house, Father. And we said thank you. Father, we know that you've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. We say that, but some of us don't believe it. They still in the mindset, it's me, it's me. But it's you in the need of a blessing today. Father, we ask you to watch over the sick, the shut in, the hungry, the homeless, the still suffering, the addict, the alcoholic, those in convalescent homes, prisons, jails, and those who are lost in the part of their sin, stuck on the side of the road and don't have any place to go. Father, touch them in a special way and let them, be, let them know that you God, you God all by yourself. Father, we ask you to bless the offering that we picked up or collect for the church, for the upbuilding and lifting of your kingdom, not ours, Father, because somebody's in need. And when you're in need of a blessing, if you're in the right mindset, you call on the blessing giver, which is Jesus Christ. Father, because he can do all things but fail. So, Father, as we go into this service today, I want you to bless the man that's going to bring the word. Touch him in a special way. Touch him from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. Dip him down in your treasures and let him come up with a message that can enlighten, prosper, and benefit each and every one of us. Father, we ask you all these blessings in the mighty Son of Jesus' name. And we say amen, amen, and amen.
victory in Jesus. Yes, There's only one way to have victory. Yes, and the Bible tells us we are more than conquerors Amen. through Amen. Christ Jesus. Right. To Mount Olive Missionary Baptist Church, to our shepherd of this flock, yes, Pastor Lord. Henry, to the deacons and their wives, to the officers, to members, visitors, and friends. It's good to be in God's house this morning. Yes, Lord. And God did give me a word. And I don't know how Brother Andrew knew it, but he prayed part of my word this morning in his prayer. A man bearing his talents. God gave it to us. And he gave it to us to use Amen. for his glory yes, Lord. and to benefit the world. Yes, Lord. We are not on our own. We didn't get here on our own, and we are going to give an account for our lives while we are here on this earth. Amen. So this morning, after us, spiritual high last week with Pastor Henry celebrating his, his uh, uh, celebrating him as our pastor. Uh, I guess some people just got so high until they don't need them to come to church on a, on a Sunday afterward. They just filled with the Holy Ghost and just overflowing and still celebrating. But it's good to be here. It's good to go into the house of the Lord. We never know what God has in store for us when we come to his house. Somebody may be struggling with some issues that when you walk into the house of the Lord, I, you can say like David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. It ought to be a place of refuge, a place where we can come and celebrate Victory in Christ Jesus. Amen. Our text this morning is going to come from the book of Matthew, the 25th chapter, talking about the parable of the talents. The parable of the talents. And I'm going to read a few verses of this and we're going to get on with the message. For it would be like a man going on a journey who called his servant and entrusted them with his property. To one he gave five talents, to one he gave two talents, and to another he gave one talent and went away. He who had received the five talents went at once and traded them and made five more talents. So also the one who had two talents traded and had added two more talents. But the one who received one talent dug in the ground and hid his master's money. Let us pray. Father God, we ask your blessings on this service and this sermon this morning. Open our hearts and our minds to receive the word of God. And be with us, Lord, that we may leave here better than we came. Guide us and strengthen us now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 I want to talk to you this morning about use it or lose it. Use it or lose it. I know that feeling well <laughs> because I, as a, as a child, I was a introvert and still am, except when I was around my friends and we were the noisiest things it was around. But in Sunday school, I didn't have very much to say. But I admired my father and my mother because I grew up in a Christian home and my father and my mother were leaders in the church 
and the community. And so they were my role models. I looked up to them. Even as an adult, I don't feel, I didn't feel comfortable with public speaking when I was a young man. But as a youngster, I used to worry about what I was going to do with my life when I became an adult. I saw so many adults that were in the church and in the community that had failed lives. They struggled all their lives and it seemed like they never, never really found their footing in this world. So I didn't want to grow up like that. But now I can tell you from experience that you were chosen in Christ before you were born to do good works. We could have been put on this earth any time. God could have put us here a thousand years ago, a thousand years in the future, a hundred years in the future, but God put us on this earth at right now, and he had a plan when he put us here. It was something that God wanted you to do, and you're here today because God has a work for us to do. It may be witnessing to us a sinner. It may be saving someone's life. It may be your own family members who are gone astray. But God put you here on this earth in the year 2021, 20, 22, whatever your year you were born, God had a plan when he put you on the face of this earth. So we are to use what God has given us. It's to make a difference. We were chosen to make a difference. John 15, 1 and 2 says, Jesus says, I am the vine and my father is the gardener. He cut off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that bears fruit he prunes so they can bear even more fruit, be more fruitful. A branch that is connected to the vine bears the same fruit that the vine bears. Jesus came to seek and save those who were lost. The last commandment he gave as he was getting ready to go back to heaven and be with his father was, go ye into all the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them, uh, these new disciples, to obey, obey, obey all the commands that I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even until the ends of the age. When you don't feel you have courage to do things, Jesus commanded us, or we should command us to read 2 Timothy 3.16. This says, all scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses this to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. And Matthew 7 and 12, he said, Ask, and it will be given. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and our door will be open to you. For everyone who asks, receive, and everyone who seeks, find, and to everyone who knocks, the doors are open. This I know. God wants us to know our purpose here on earth. Amen. He went so far as to put it in a book called the Bible. If you read the Bible, it's impossible. It's not possible to read, no, not to read the Bible, to study the Bible. Because the Bible tells us to study to show ourselves approved. A workman not ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. When you study the Bible and you see what God has put in there, it's a, 
It's a road map. It's a mouth to guide us through this life and teach us the things that God wants us to do. Jesus came to seek and save that which was lost. And he said, the work I do that you can do, even better work than this, that can you do. So don't be a Sunday morning Christian. Before you were conceived in your mother's womb, God had a plan for your life. There are millions of people who never find their life purpose. There are millions of people who are millionaires, who have accumulated a lot of worldly wealth, and they are empty inside because God gave them wealth, but he left an empty hole in that body. And your soul that God, only God can feel. I don't care how much you accumulate, how much knowledge you got, how much wealth you got. God wants, is the only one that can feel that emptiness that you feel and you have in your life. So seek the Lord while he can be found. The only person that can tell you why you're here is God himself. The Sunday that I joined the church back in Michigan there, Oak Grove AME Church, the male choir was singing, and I joined that male choir, and my wife, my life took an upward turn. The choir had about 30 faithful older men, and they mentored me. We practiced every Saturday, Saturday evening at 7 o'clock, and that was my humble beginning. I started to read in the Bible, and I remember that my wife and I went down to the Bible bookstore, and I bought a Bible. But the Bible that I bought was a Bible that I could kind of read and understand. It was a child's Bible, and it was a picture Bible. It would uh, give some scripture, and it would give an example with, with a picture. And I got hooked on that Bible, and my wife and I went to Acapulco, Mexico. And they had all kind of tours going on while we were vacationing down there. But I, she had to almost drag me out of the bed. Every morning I'm laying up in my bed reading my Bible. I could not get enough of God's word. And she would say, well, the bus is leaving. You got to get on the bus and go on the tour. And I wanted to say, you go ahead. I'm going to stay here and, and talk to the Lord. <laughs> Beautiful country. Everything is wonderful down there. But... God had a, he had my attention, and he would not let me go. Wherever Jesus went, he had crowds that followed. And when my, that male chorus that I was, when he sang, wherever we went and sung, we went all up in Canada, and we were invited to go uh, pay places, so it's too far away for us to travel, but we got we had a following, a bunch of numbers from the church would follow us, and we just had a wonderful, marvelous time. And God blessed us, and, and that was the best blessing that I ever had in my life, because there's no one that comes in this world empty that God does not want to feel. Don't let the devil tell you that you can't use the gifts that God put in you. And he's in the process of discouraging us. Right. It's the even try. We don't, we don't know what we can do right. until we try. Right. Because if you've got God in your life, you've got everything that you need to succeed. I remember going to church to talk to my pastor. I didn't want to be a bench member. I, went, I remember going to church to talk to my pastor, and he was busy running and visiting people and going to church conferences. And I couldn't catch him. I stopped by on the way home from work, and he was gone. So I wrote him a letter and told him I wanted to learn how to be an active member in that church. I told him I wanted to be an officer. And he immediately made me a steward of, of that church. And I got blessed because Matthew uh, 5 and 6 says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they will be filled. And Hebrews 12 tell us, for the word of God is alive and active, sharper than a double-edged sword. It penetrates even the soul and the spirit, the joints and the marrow. 
It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. So I was so filled and up, so excited that, that, that I, I didn't want to do anything but go to church, go to work, go to church, and be active doing what God had called me to do. Our assistant associate pastor told me, said, I want you to teach Bible class. I said, Reverend Jessica, I don't know anything. I don't know the Bible well enough to teach Bible class. So she said, well, I'm going to sign you to, with another teacher, and you go in and teach. I didn't know that they was plotting all along, that after about three weeks, they pulled that other teacher and sat somewhere and left that Bible class. And guess what, y'all? God started dealing with me so much that my Bible class became the largest Bible class at that church. Now, I'm talking about a church of 2,000 members. I'm not talking about a, a small church, 2,000 members. I had the largest Bible class at the church. And the pastor, they would come out and look and see people coming down. To see. We had an upstairs in the basement. I was in the basement. We filled that basement up. They had to pull us out of the basement, give us a space up in the sanctuary because God had, had blessed me. You know when you hunger for righteousness, when you hunger and thirst after the word of God, when you hunger and thirst and you want to do something for God, God gets involved in your life. And not only get involved in your life, other people are drawn to you when you are doing what God put you on this earth to do. That was one of the most rewarding times of, of my life. But one thing I found in God, never ask you to do something that you already know how to do. He called you to do something. He called Abraham to go to a land that I'm not going to tell you how to get there. I want you to start walking. And I'm going to die. Do you realize how many times during the day that God speaks to us? And we never listen. We think it's, you know, some phony or something that, that's on our mind. God put, plants things in your mind and in your heart for you to do things. And sometimes we just fluff them off or we don't follow up on them. But when you are in tune with the word of God and when God speaks to you, you know it's God's voice. It comes through loud and clear. And you will know what the next, your next step for your next move would be. I believe that every believer has a God-given talent to use for God's glory. And we can't claim that we have no gift, uh, no opportunity. In fact, what we do with what we have will be based on our judgment when we stand in the kingdom. We won't be judged for what we can't do. I won't be judged because I can't sing or play the piano. But I will be judged for what God has called me to do. And I will have to give an account. And you will have to give an account of your gifts that God gave you and you didn't use. I don't use the talent God gave me. If I don't use it, I lose it. On the other hand, if I'm faithful and use my ability or you use your ability, God will multiply opportunities for service. Use it or lose it. Some people are timid and don't feel comfortable talking with strangers, but through spiritual growth and maturity, we develop a holy boldness. I have a book that I give out people that I just meet because we're down at, at the clinic that we go to. It's called Answers to Your Questions About Heaven. And one of the things that I enjoy doing is giving a person a book and say, read this book. It will, it will bless your life. And when you get to heaven, I'll meet you at the gate to show you around. And they look just... I know it, it has an effect on them because the eyes buck. And they, I, I never thought about heaven that way. You don't have to go up to somebody and get in somebody's face and tell them. Just pass. If you, you, if you read some material and it's good 
and it blesses you, bless somebody else. God put us on this earth to be a blessing. In whatever way it is that you're effective to blessing folks, God will open a door and make a way for you to be a blessing. Tell somebody, I'll meet you in heaven. I know you want to go to heaven. And I'll meet you in heaven. I want you to read this material. I want you to go to church. Or go pick them up and bring them to church with you Sunday. I think the greatest reward that we'll ever receive, or the greatest fulfillment that we'll ever receive, is when we get to heaven, we'll meet people that we, that we never met before, and they'll be thanking you that I, because of you, I'm in heaven. You witness to somebody, and they witness to somebody, and they witness to somebody. You never met that person, but they know who it was that started this chain of going. And you have thousands of people in heaven that you never met that will come, and God will reward you for everyone to sell. Share this word. Tell God, tell the Lord, thank you for saving me. Because the Bible says you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do you light a lamp and put it on a bushel. But instead you put it on a lampstand and it gives light to everybody in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before good men. That they may see your good work and glorify your Father which is in heaven. When you witness to unbelievers, God, just keep on filling your life with good things so you can keep on witnessing, keep on believing. That's going to be a great awakening and a, and a great celebration when we get to heaven. And all the people that we uh, didn't think were going to make it, and we see them there, and you say, well... I am so glad to see you. They said, well, it's something you said that caused me to turn my life around and seek the Lord. Someday we will have to give an account on the judgment seat of Christ. As Christians, we won't be judged for our sins because Christ has already paid that sin debt. But we will be judged for what we have done while we were here on this earth. So serve the Lord. Tell others about the goodness of the Lord. God saved you and he wants to save everybody. You either lose it, use it, or you lose it. Don't miss heaven's reward. Jesus used the parable about the talent to demonstrate how we are to use our gifts. Again, the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of the man, man going on a long trip and called together his servants. He had trusted money to them while he was gone. He gave one of his servants five bags of silver, and the other one he gave another, or two bags of silver, and another one he gave one bag of silver. And he went away, and the man with the five bags immediately began to invest the money and earn five more bags. The servant with two bags of silver went to work and earned two more bags. But the servant with one bag dug a hole and hid his money and the master's money in the ground. And when the master came back to ask for an accounting, after a long journey, he returned from his trip. And when he called them together to give an account of how they had used his money, the servant who had been entrusted with five bags of silver came forward and said, Master, I gave, got five bags Give me five bags. Huh? Here's five more. Oh, the master says, well done. He was praised him, a good servant. You have been faithful over small things, so now I will give you responsibility. To come, let's celebrate together. And the servant with two bags of silver came forward. Master, you gave me two bags of silver to invest, and I have earned two more. Master said, well done, my good and faithful servants. You have been faithful in having small amounts, so now I will give you the responsibility. Let's celebrate together. Then the servant with the one bag came, Master, I knew you were a harsh man. 
and I bet and harvest crops that you don't plant and gather crops that you didn't cultivate. I was afraid I would lose your money, so I hid it in the earth. Look here, here's your money back. The master replied, you wicked and lazy servant. If you knew I harvest crops that I didn't plant and gather what I didn't cultivate, why didn't you deposit my money in the bank? At least I could you could have gotten some interest on it. Then he ordered to take the money from this servant and give it to the one with the ten talents. Those who are well use their talents and gifts well, even more will be given. And we will have an abundance. But from those who do nothing, even the little they have will be taken away. Use it or lose it. If my people, this is what God told Solomon when Solomon was talking about how God was not blessing Israel. He said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. God is expecting big things from you and from me. The greatest words you can hear from God is, when you stand in judgment, it's well done, my good and faithful servant. Receive your reward. Don't just know about Jesus. Get to know Jesus. Invite him to come into your life and to change your heart. Invite him to strengthen you as you travel along this Christian journey. Jesus said that when we meet him in heaven, he will tell us, well done. We have done a good job. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Romans 8, 7 and 37 say, we are more than conquerors through him who loves you. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor neither angels or principalities or powers or things, present or things to come, will ever be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Have you committed your life to Christ? Have you given Christ your life? Do you know for sure that when you leave this earth that you have another home that you're going to? Jesus says, I'm going away to prepare a home for you. That where I am, there you may be also. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father except through me. Have you invited Christ in your life today? Don't be a church member. I, I, it's, a, it's a lot of good folks. I call themselves good, but the Bible says there's none good. We all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And the only way we can get into heaven is to go in through Jesus. Because he said, I am that way. Have you tried Jesus? Don't be wondering about whether you're going to heaven or not. Know that everything is all right between my soul and my Savior. This is a good day to serve the Lord. If you have not made up your mind, if you are not sure today that you're going to heaven, today can be the first day of a new beginning. I have a friend that I, he and I graduated together from high school. He went into Navy, I went in the Air Force. And I hadn't seen him for years, but we got together afterwards when our class, graduating class, we were a small class, four boys and five girls. And we started meeting every year. And I has asked him, have you given your life to Christ? He said, well, I'm an I'm a officer in my church. I said, but that doesn't get you to heaven. Have you given your life to Christ? And he says, I know, I don't know. So I led him in the plan of salvation. He and I had a conversation the other week, and he was telling me about another person back in the high school that we were. And she had 
we was talking, and he says, uh, we was talking on the phone. I said, do you have a phone number? He said, yeah. I said, give me her phone number. He gave me her phone number. I called her up and was talking with her and about her life. And she says, I said, have you given your life to Christ? Are you a member of the church? She said, yeah, I'm a mother in the church. Now she's the same age as I am. She's 80 in our 80s. I said, you, you are a mother of the church? She said, yes, I'm a mother of the church. I said, have you given your life to Christ? Are you, are you going to heaven? She said, well, I hope I do. Now, how many people have you ever heard say, I hope I do, I want to go to heaven? I led her in the plan of salvation right there on that phone, and she accepted Christ. And she said, you have made my day. You have blessed my life. I, saw, I tell that story to tell you this. Talk to your friends. Talk to your co-worker. Talk to your family. Even meet a stranger on the street. My wife was, was getting her nails done. A man came in and brought his little child, and they were, they were doing something, and he came out, and I had to ask him, I said, I got a book I want you to read. I gave him that book, and his eyes booked it. He started to read. I said, you know what? There are a lot of people that God put in our lives, and we never address them. Tell somebody about what God has done in your life. Don't be like the man that God gave one talent, went and buried it in the ground and did not receive his reward in heaven. You know, the Bible said, throw, he, throw him in the outer space all right, all right. and put him out there with the devil because God has no place for a child of God that won't share the good news with unbelief. God bless you today. May you understand that you are here for a purpose and for a reason. Don't waste your time here on earth and think you're going to die and go to heaven. God has a job, has a place for you. He loves you. I want to tell you, he loves you. And I love you. And I want to see you. Now, I'm going to be there. I don't have no doubt in my mind. But I'll be there. Will you be there? Will you join me in this victory glory? May God bless you. And may God keep you. And may God strengthen you as you travel a long life's journey. The door of the church is open. If there's anyone that's not sure about your salvation today, and you want to come down and confess Christ as your Lord and Savior, now is your time. Now is your moment. The door of the church stands wide open. You got these ministers. We got a, this church is blessed. It's got five ministers. It's got a deacon board. It's got mothers of the church. You got a chance to grow as a child. God bless you. Why my way gets so hard. You know I just don't understand.
Supper. I'd like to uh, read a scripture that I'd normally like to read before we start, or at least the beginning of the service. I'll be reading from the King James Version Bible. This is Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 30. And it reads as thus. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. Repeat that again. Let a man examine himself, and so let him eat that bread and drink that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. I like to have the deacons come forth. Andrew, we got I got my eyes on you. <laughs> bless the bread for us. Bless the cup. Amen.
Bible said, after he had given thanks, he took the bread and broke it. And he said, eat, this is my body. Let us eat. And after the same manner, he also took the cup and that sup, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do, as often as you do it in remembrance of me. Let us drink. Afterward, they sung a song and went out. <laughs> <laughs> 